welcome. I want to share with you a few articles that I came across and give you kind of the highlights of these articles. I'll leave a link in the description so you can read these articles and form your own opinion. Stay tuned. I have an article that shows what people are planning on stockpiling, at least a survey of what people either have in their pantry or are planning on stockpiling. I was surprised at some of these, so stay tuned. Okay, let's get to this. Empty shelves, severe shortages, and widespread crop failures are ahead in the fall of 2021. As we head into the fall months, our store shelves are going to be getting emptier. Shortages of products will become more widespread, and it looks like we could potentially have a very bad harvest season. The writer of this article is quoting from a U.S. Department of Agriculture paper and says that 63% of U.S. spring wheat is in poor, very poor condition. Last year at this time, that number was sitting at just 6%. That's a pretty big difference right there. And wheat is a major part of our food supply. The article continues, in fact, the USDA is now projecting the levels of corn wheat and soybeans will all be at their lowest levels since 2013 and that's due to the poor weather according to the usda and they had to scale back their expectations of u.s crop production in 2021 which is causing domestic inventories to dwindle in the corn wheat and soybean supply it's not just in the united states where we're seeing crop failures we're seeing it in other parts of the world in south america brazil argentina and elsewhere now this i found interesting about vice president harris and notice these are in quotes this was when she was in singapore the stories that we're now hearing about the caution that if you want to have christmas toys for your children now might be the time to start buying them because the delay may be many many months here we have an article from the food institute says massive supply chain disruptions continue to pervade the U.S. food sector with labor challenges triggering shortage from raw materials and ingredients to packaged goods. Some of the largest U.S. food distributors, including United Natural Foods and Cisco, are having difficulty fulfilling orders, reported Yahoo Finance. Cisco further noted that prices for key goods such as chicken, pork, and paper products for takeout packaging are climbing amid tight supplies. Now, as far as labor challenges, across most sectors, manufacturers are struggling to meet demand due to continued employee shortages. I know in our town, most, whether it's restaurants, construction, Walmart, discount stores, all these stores are having employee shortages. They just cannot find people to work. If you can't find people to work, you can't produce products. What it does is it makes the demand go higher than the supply, which means inflated prices. And it says the, the shortage of U.S. truck drivers is further exacerbating bottlenecks in the supply chain with retention challenges playing a key role. Turnover rates are over 90% for large long-haul carriers and over 72% for small carriers, according to the U.S. DOT. Now we get back to food in the grocery retail sector. Inventory on a wide range of categories continues to fluctuate. And I noticed at my Walmart it does. I had made a video last week of empty shelves. In that video, I showed pictures of like vinegar that we hadn't had for quite a while. Well, they stocked it up this week. That shows you your fluctuating inventories in stores like Walmart and other retail stores. Not just grocery stores, retail stores that are going to struggle and are struggling on getting goods in to their stores. This is the part of the article I found interesting because I had noticed this. In attempts to mitigate supply chain issues, retailers can draw on their experiences from last year. Many retailers have reduced and simplified product assortment in many categories, concentrating on keeping improved stock positions on a fewer number of items. And I've noticed this at Walmart, where they would have all different brands of say these cereals. Now they're carrying great value in the bigger ones, Cheerios, Rice Krispies, not the assortment of everything they used to have. Even on like peanut butter, I've noticed at Walmart, the shelf used to be six or seven feet long and about four shelves. Now it's about three feet wide and three shelves. Probably about half the quantity of peanut butter. And they have the Great Value brand, Jiffy and Skippy, and that's pretty much all the peanut butter that we have. 
here we go. US food suppliers are having trouble keeping shelves stocked. We'll go through a little bit of this and then we'll get into what people are stockpiling. Some of the largest US food distributors are recording difficulties in fulfilling orders as lack of order ways in on supply chain. Now it goes through and talks about what I had talked about earlier. They were referring to this article. There's a couple things in here that I wanted to show you. An analysis from Decadata, which tracks retail transactions with shoppers and manufacturers, shows that retailers are bumping up against manufacturer capacity as they stockpile ahead of the holiday season. In July, the incidence of suppliers limiting or putting a cap on orders from customers was more than double what it was in January, as data shows. And then it talks about Natural Food Incorporation. This is a common thing labor shortages the united natural foods representative says we anticipate additional supplier challenges in short term with gradual improvement through fall and winter we'll see but i want to bring these articles to you so you can have your own opinion and form your own opinion and not let me influence whether you want to stockpile or not now this is interesting this is from supermarket news another stockpiling round may be in store for grocers Grocery retailers could be in for another wave of consumer stockpiling. New research from MR Intelligence shows they surveyed 1,000 U.S. adults. 69.4% said they were considering replenishing a current stockpile of groceries and other essential products. 46% of those surveyed have said they created a product stockpile. I would take that that that's within the past year. Are you considering replenishing an existing stockpile? About 15, 16% say no. 70% yes. 15% are on the fence. Now 60% of consumers polled reported still having products in stockpile they created last year. Looking at it, an even higher percentage of respondents, 65%, said they now plan to always have a stock of food and supplies for emergencies. Another 15.7% weren't sure if they will create an emergency supply going forward. About 28% said they're considering the creation of a stockpile. This is why they are considering creating a stockpile. 30.7% I'm concerned that products won't be in stock when I need them. Second place, 27.9, I'm concerned about going to the store. Third place, I'm running low on the contents of my current stockpile, and I'm concerned about the prices of products going up or inflation. About 18% of people are worried about that. 18% of a thousand people. That would be 180 people out of a thousand. Now let's see what they're buying. This is what I've been waiting to show you. It's kind of interesting what people, which products are already in or will be in your stockpile. Number one, I, I just can't believe it, it's toilet paper. <laughs> Number two is hand sanitizer. Number three, paper towels. You notice it's not food. I, I'm really surprised um, I can live without toilet paper and paper towels long before I can live without food. And then we have soap, disinfecting wipes, canned goods. There we go, 46% canned goods. Now, if you haven't seen my video, I've got a video on canned meats. Medical supplies is next. And then we have tissues, pet food and supplies, pasta, beer and wine, of course baby products, and then etc. But what surprises me most out of this list is how far down food is in people's priorities. I don't know. Maybe they knew something I don't. I hope you found this interesting. I certainly found this interesting on what people have stockpiled or are currently planning on stockpiling. In my opinion, these are all great to have. I have every one of these except for pet food. I don't have a pet, I don't have a baby, but I stockpile every one of these. I'm just really surprised what made the top list.
and the food isn't people's top priority. It's coming in what one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm just surprised there's not more food items in this that people are planning on stockpiling. King goods and pasta are the top. Wow, that that's just crazy. But it's still interesting nonetheless. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I brought you some information that you can look into. I found this what people are stockpiling very interesting. Hopefully you get a chance to read the other articles and form your own opinions on what you believe as far as empty shelves and labor shortages and food inflation in the supply chain and then forming your opinion uh, do so accordingly as far as your prepping. So until next time, thank you for watching and happy prepper shopping.